Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for additional board review lectures for the Comlex and USMLE exam as well as for medical school. Let's talk about some miscellaneous skin disorders such as pityriasis rosea. This typically presents with a herald patch that's followed days later by a Christmas tree distribution and patients have multiple papular eruptions that remit spontaneously. Also, erythema nodosum is an inflammatory lesion of subcutaneous fat, usually on anterior shins, and it's associated with coccidiomycosis, histo, TB, leprosy, streptococcal infections, and sarcoid. Acanthosis nigricans presents with hyperplasia of the stratum spinosum. It's associated with hyperinsulinemia, so patients who have Cushing's disease, diabetes, and we can review another important topic, that's actinic keratosis. Patients with actinic keratosis typically will present with pre-malignant lesions caused by sun exposure, small rough erythematous or brownish papules, and there's a risk of carcinoma that's proportional to the epithelial dysplasia. As a review, some other important skin conditions include albinism, where patients have normal melanocyte number with a decrease in melanin production due to a decrease of tyrosinase. And it can also be caused by failure of neural crest cell migration during development. Vitiligo presents with irregular areas of complete depigmentation that's caused by a decrease in melanocytes. Also, melasma is a term that's used for hyperpigmentation that's associated with pregnancy or oral contraceptive use. Now, in addition to these skin disorders, I want to review some of the conditions that you should be aware of and relate them to the specific skin condition. If you hear the word Christmas patch or herald patch, think about pityriasis rosacea. If you see a patient who has coccidio, histo, leprosy, TB, streptococcal infections, then think about erythema nodosum. For patients who have Cushing's or diabetes, think about acanthosis nigricans. And for patients who present with premalignant lesions from some exposure, especially in farmers, you're going to think about actinic keratosis. Also, patients who have HPV can typically develop verruque. So verruque vulgaris on the hands and condylomata acuminata on the genitals is caused by HPV. And these are warts that are soft, tan-colored, cauliflower-like lesions. In addition, lesions that occur at the site of contact um, that present with the type 4 hypersensitivity reactions following the exposure to an allergen, usually allergic contact dermatitis. The psoriasis can present with an increase in stratin spinosum and a decrease in stratin granulosum, along with bleeding spots when the scales are scraped off. And that can be associated with nail pitting and psoriatic arthritis. Keep in mind that papules and plaques with silvery scaling, especially on the knees and elbows, is considered to be psoriasis. Patients who come in and present with a pasted on flat, greasy, pigmented squamous cell epithelium proliferation with keratin-filled cysts is considered to have seborrheic dermatitis, I mean sorry, seborrheic keratosis, and the lesions occur on the hands, trunk, and extremities, and common benign neoplasm that's seen in older adults who have a sign of lesser tree lot, which is sudden appearance of multiple seborrheic keratosis, which indicates an underlying malignancy, such as a GI lymphoid. Keep in mind that another high-yield condition is urticaria. So urticaria patients are diagnosed by clinical impression in which the biopsy may show a characteristic perivascular edema. So it can be difficult to determine the exact cause. But patients may have urticaria um, develop from food, drug, viruses, and it's typically a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. Um, it lasts greater than six weeks, 
and the condition results from a release of histamine and prostaglandins from mast cells. The treatment is with systemic antihistamines. Also, for the history and physical, the lesions are uh, typically elevated, the papules that are reddish or white and variable in size, and in severe allergic reactions, extracutaneous manifestations can include tongue swelling, angioedema, that's deeper and more diffuse swelling, asthma, GI symptoms, joint swelling, and fever. So those are some of the key findings that you'll have in urticaria. What about drug eruptions? Well, drug eruptions are seen 7 to 14 days after exposure in a patient who presents with a urticarial lupus-like or pruritic lichenoid or blistered rash. The drugs can cause all four types of hypersensitivity reactions and patients may have eosinophilia and a cutaneous infiltrate. The treatment is usually discontinuing the offending agent and treat the symptoms with antihistamines. Eruptions are generally widespread, relatively symmetrical and pruritic, and most are short-lived, disappearing within one to two weeks, followed by removal of the offending agent. The exception is a fixed drug eruption, which consists of reddish macules or papules that develop in the same area. And after these lesions resolve, there's persistent brown pigmentation. And extreme complications of drug eruptions include erythroderma and toxic epidermal necrolysis. So that was a board review of some of the important dermatological skin conditions and their associations with various diseases that you may see on the complex USMLE board exam. For additional board review lectures, please visit www.comlexflashcards.com and good luck in your preparation for the boards.